Welcome to the Unraveling the Scriptures channel. Many people wonder if there are ancient Egyptian records that mention the Exodus, the plagues in Egypt, and the liberation of the Hebrew people, with Semites leaving Egyptian territory. The answer is yes, there are some documents that seemingly offer ancient archaeological evidence. In this video, I want to present to you the famous Ipua Papyrus, which describes the plagues in Egypt and the liberation of slaves who left the country. So stay tuned for another video on the channel, the Ipua Papyrus and the Plagues in Egypt. The most significant event in the Book of Exodus is undoubtedly the liberation of the people of Israel from Egypt, marked by the ten plagues that struck the Egyptians and the parting of the Red Sea. Various chronologies have been proposed to date the Exodus and the departure of the Hebrews from Egypt. The most well-known suggests a date around 1290 BC, but this theory has been contested and is no longer widely accepted. This is partly due to new interpretations of the biblical text and archaeological discoveries that show the presence of Israel in Canaan around 1200 BC. The chronology most aligned with the biblical account places the Exodus around the mid-14th century BC, approximately 3,450 years ago. An ancient document known as the Ipua Papyrus, written in Egyptian hieratic during the 19th dynasty of Egypt, is currently housed at the Rijksmuseum van Oudheden in Leiden, Netherlands. This papyrus, which contains the admonitions of Ipua, is an incomplete literary work and a subject of academic debate. The Ipua Papyrus is one of the most controversial documents as it mentions plagues that occurred in Egypt, the escape of slaves, and the Nile River turned to blood, events that are closely related to the biblical account of the Exodus. The discovery of the Ipua Papyrus occurred in the first half of the 19th century, during a time when many ancient Egyptian artifacts were found in Egypt, often by merchants or scholars seeking quick profit. The Ipua Papyrus was discovered by these untrained merchants, who sold it to Giovanni Anastasi, then consul in Egypt for Sweden and Norway. In 1828, Anastasi sold the papyrus to the Dutch government. Now, regarding the Ipua papyrus, which is actually a poem, the name Ipua was quite common in Egypt during the 18th dynasty and even in earlier periods, such as around 1850 BC and 1450 BC. This makes the name Ipua relevant to the period of the Exodus within a more precise chronology. In the text, Ipua laments that the world has turned upside down. A woman who had no box now has furniture. A young woman who used to see herself reflected in the water now has a mirror, while a man who was rich is now in rags. He appeals to the Lord of All, a title applied to both the king and the sun god Ra, to destroy his enemies and remember his religious obligations. This echoes the situation of the Exodus when many Egyptians revolted against their deities, as these did not protect them during the plagues. Next, the text offers a vivid description of disorder. There is no longer respect for the laws, and even the burial of the king in the pyramid has been desecrated. The poem continues reminiscing about better days until it is abruptly interrupted as the final part of the papyrus is missing. It is possible that the poem concluded with a response from the Lord of All, or a prophecy about the coming of a powerful king who would restore order. Later, I will be reading other excerpts from the Ipua Papyrus to provide more information about this intriguing document. Now, discussing the timeline around the Ipua Papyrus, it has been dated to not earlier than the 19th Egyptian dynasty, around 1250 BC. This means that the papyrus was produced during this period and, according to experts, may reflect events from a more distant past. Although some suggest the text refers to occurrences much earlier, around 1800 BC, this theory is unlikely given that the papyrus was created in 1250 BC. Therefore, it may refer to ancient times, but not as ancient as some propose. Talking about the relationship between the Ipua papyrus and the biblical account of the Exodus, Ipua has frequently been mentioned in popular literature as a possible confirmation of the events described in the book of Exodus. This is largely due to its mention that the river is blood, a description that refers to the transformation of the Nile into blood 
during the plagues in Egypt, along with its frequent references to servants and slaves fleeing Egypt. However, most scholars do not agree that the Ipua papyrus portrays the period of the Exodus or the plagues described in the biblical account. Many of these archaeologists and Egyptologists reject this association, primarily because the traditional view places the Exodus during the time of Ramses II, which they believe is incorrect. In reality, the Pharaoh who confronted Moses and resisted the plagues would not be Ramses II, but Thutmose III, with the involvement of his father. Thutmose II was the Pharaoh who ordered the killing of babies, while Thutmose III was the one who confronted Moses, God, and the plagues of Egypt. As I delve deeper into the Ipua papyrus, I now bring to you exclusively a comparison between it and the account of Moses' exodus. I will read various passages from the Ipua papyrus in parallel with the book of Exodus. Enjoy this content, as it offers strong evidence for the existence of the exodus. The Ipua papyrus describes, The plague is throughout the region, blood everywhere. Surely the Nile overflows, but no one wants to cultivate it. Many dead were buried in the river, and the current seems like a tomb. Surely the river is bloodied, and when someone tries to drink from it, they turn away due to the smell. This is our water, this is our happiness. What shall we do about it? Everything is in ruins. Now, in comparison with the book of Exodus, chapter 7, verses 20 to 21, and verse 24, and all the waters of the river turned to blood. The fish that were in the river died, and the river stank, and the Egyptians could not drink the water of the river, and there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. The Egyptians dug wells along the river to drink water, for they could not drink from the water of the Nile. In parallel, the Ipua papyrus says, Surely the magical words and spells have been discovered in the sacred chambers. The spells and enchantments were ineffective, because they are repeated by the people. Now, let's look at Exodus, chapter 8, verses 18 to 19. And the magicians did so with their enchantments to produce lice, but they could not. Note that in the plague of lice, the powers of the magicians lose their efficacy. They even tried to replicate the plague, but in the end, they could not. Continuing, the Ipua papyrus describes Surely gates, columns, and walls are consumed by fire. The entire royal house is without its servants and slaves. It had barley and wheat. The birds and fish had fine linen and good copper and oils. The inhabitants of the marshes have protections. People feed on the grass dragged by the water for the birds. No grain or grass can be found. Barley appeared on all the roads. Surely what could be seen yesterday has disappeared. The land is abandoned due to barrenness and likewise the cutting of linen. This description from the Ipua papyrus reflects the chaos caused by the plagues of Egypt, with the land devastated and natural resources scarce, very similar to what is described in Exodus regarding the destruction and suffering in Egypt. Now, observe the striking similarity with the plague of fiery hail mentioned in Exodus chapter 9, verses 23, 24, 25, and 26, as well as verses 31 and 32, and also in chapter 10, verse 15. Fire came down on the earth, and there was hail and fire mixed. Note that the similarity is remarkable with the Ipua papyrus, which reports how columns, gates, and walls were consumed by fire. Continuing, the hail struck all the land of Egypt, hitting everything that was in the field, both man and beast, it struck all the grass and broke all the trees of the field. Again, observe the similarity with the Ipua papyrus, which talks about the scarcity of barley, wheat, birds, and fish. In addition to mentioning that people fed on the grass, dragged by the water, while the birds could not find grain. The similarity with the book of Exodus is extremely striking. Continuing with the reading of Exodus, only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, there was no hail. The flax and barley were damaged, for the barley was in the ear and the flax in bloom. But the wheat and spelt were not affected because they had not yet grown. Nothing green remained, neither tree nor grass of the field in all the land of Egypt. Once again, observe the striking similarity 
when the Ipua papyrus states that barley has perished on all the roads, that nothing seen yesterday can be seen, and that the land was abandoned due to sterility. Continuing with the Ipua papyrus, surely all the herds of goats are with hearts crying, the cattle cry out because of the state of the land, and in the same way, the flocks wander without shepherds, bewildered, and no man can gather them, each trying to bring back those marked with his name. Now, comparing with the book of Exodus, chapter 9, verses 3, 19 and 21, Behold, the hand of the Lord will be upon your cattle in the field, upon the horses, donkeys, camels, oxen and sheep. There will be a very grievous pestilence. Send and gather your cattle and all that you have in the field, for every man and animal that is found in the field and is not brought home will die when the hail comes. But he who did not regard the word of the Lord left his servants and cattle in the field. The Ipua papyrus also mentions that the day did not dawn, which aligns with the account in Exodus chapter 10 verse 22. There was thick darkness in all the land of Egypt for three days. As for the plague of the firstborn, the Ipua papyrus describes Surely the sons of the great were dashed against the wall. Surely the children of the nobles were abandoned in the streets. Surely the people have diminished in number, and whoever buries his brother is found everywhere. There is a groaning mixed with lamentation throughout the land. Now, observe the remarkable similarity between the book of Exodus and the account in the Ipua papyrus. In Exodus 12.29, it is written, He struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sat on his throne, to the firstborn of the captive who was in the prison, and all the firstborn of the animals. And there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. Note the connection between this great cry and the great groaning mixed with lamentations mentioned in the Ipua papyrus, exactly what Exodus describes about the death of the firstborn. Finally, there is something very interesting in the Ipua papyrus, which mentions, Surely, gold, lapis lazuli, silver, turquoise, carnelian, and bronze are placed around the necks of the slave women. This contrasts with Exodus 12, 35 to 36. And they asked the Egyptians for jewels of silver, jewels of gold and clothing, and they gave them what they asked. Thus, they plundered the Egyptians. According to some scholars, the Ipua papyrus is indeed in harmony with the plagues of Exodus and makes a strong reference to the text written by Moses. In my perspective, it is very likely that the Ipua text is a copy of a diary from the time of the Exodus, found in some library of the time or in the house of a librarian, considering that the Egyptians revered Thoth and treated history and literature as a form of worship to the gods, needing to remain faithful to the writings. The Ipua papyrus, dated to 1250 BC, could be a copy of an older text, dated around 1444 BC, when the plagues of Egypt occurred, or 1447 BC, since the name Ipua was common in the 18th dynasty. In my humble and sincere opinion, the Ipua papyrus serves as a definitive proof of the existence of the Exodus and the plagues in Egypt representing a valuable archaeological relic of Egyptology that validates the existence of Moses and the events of the plagues in Egypt. I thank everyone who watched the video. May God bless you, and I'll see you soon.